Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Now we can hear you. Cool. Yeah, I left my AirPods at home. Uh, couldn't find it. Somewhere in the house. <laughs> uh, so I had to scramble for it. Okay. Can you hear me, right? It's cool. Sweet. Let's wait for everybody to get in here. How you guys do today? Slow Monday, but there were some trades. Hi, everybody. Let me walk up this hill. And then, <sighs> so I'm trying to do a month of no alcohol. That's going to be fucking tough. Figured, uh, let's try it out. I've been trying to lose some weight. And it's like, instead of giving up food, <laughs> I'm going to give up alcohol. One or the other got to go. Food, <laughs> I cannot give up. <laughs> I might as well die. Someone puts me on a diet. How you guys doing on Monday? What you guys trade? No alcohol. Yep, preparing for Philly. And then Philly will be my reward, I guess. I was, what made me take the the challenge to do no alcohol? Uh, I was trying to work out, lose weight. Then I realized, fuck, dude, all these exercises I'm doing. Every time I I drink, you know, it all goes back to waste. So instead of me giving up food and pizza, I said, let's give up alcohol just for a month. No hard liquor. <laughs> Let me get up the hill and then we will start. Whew. Feel that running coming I dropped a little weight by not snacking at night. I was a big snacker in bed, so I just kind of gave it up. Really tough. I uh, took some edibles to go to sleep at 9 p.m. So I wake up refreshed every morning. It's really hard for me to sleep in California at 9 p.m. But you gotta do what you gotta do. All right. Up the hill. I made it. I didn't die. My health is improving. I heard of all sorts of fasting, all that stuff. I do all that stuff. I don't eat when I work, so it forces that intermittent fasting anyways. Wake up at 4 a.m. I trade, and that's pretty much the whole day, right? So... Oh, dude, edibles have been a lifesaver for me. People call it a drug, whatever, but alcohol has done more damage to people around the world than any any marijuana product. Not been a single death. The only problem with the marijuana products makes you lazy as fuck. You have to motivate yourself, otherwise you get into the grip. I don't like smoking, so that kind of helps. I only eat the edible to go to sleep at night. It acts like a, you know, it helps me sleep really early at night. I don't take that much, just 10 milligrams, which is like one big gummy. So I don't abuse that as well. So like everything, anything in life, man, if you overdose and you abuse it, then it becomes a problem. Take everything in moderation. I abuse alcohol, <laughs> but that's because I've been drinking so long. My tolerance is off the charts, you know? And so this month detox might be good. Everybody has has their flaws. You know, as long as it uh, doesn't hurt your life. Fuck, dude. We lived this life one time, guys. 
I, I know so many people that lived the perfect life, worked out, got cancer very early age. Sometimes when it's your time, it's your time. So I mean, fuck, dude. I'd rather live a shorter, more fulfilled, happy life than trying to grind it out until I'm 100 years old. With everything said, moderation is the key, guys. So same thing as working, same thing as everything else. So a quick topic on that because I... I hear a lot of people talk about, oh, you gotta, you gotta study the markets every day. No days off. It's like, uh, weekends. You gotta work. I hate the weekends. To be honest, dude, I love the fucking weekends. Weekends is a forced time off for an addicted, uh, workaholic like myself. Without the weekend, I'd be burnt out. I'd be stressed out. And you need time off, man. Be honest, you need time off. At least one day a week where just fucking unwind. Let that information soak in your head. It's like working out. If you do, if you lift weights, you need one day for the muscle to rebuild. Same thing with learning how to trade. Same thing with education. You need that time for that thing to sink in your head, man. It's like you, you can't just cram, cram, cram and then expect to remember and understand it all. You give it a day. Give it some time to soak in. And so my advice to everybody is give yourself one day, man. One day, just go fucking have fun. One day. Otherwise, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Like, why? Trading is awesome and cool, but dude, you know, seven days a week. I've never worked seven days a week like that. I mean, I enjoy it. I always think about it. I guess working is a different definition for everybody. So, I, in an aspect, I do work every day because I, I log into the chat room. I help members out. I talk about stocks. So, it's always in my head. I'm living stocks 24 7. But I guess I don't call it work. So maybe that's the difference. You know, I love it so much it doesn't count as work for me. I guess work for me would be coming to the office, sitting down. You know, like today's work. I went to my office, sat down, I worked. To me, that's work. But if I'm on my phone and people go, oh, you know, get off your phone. I'm like, dude, that's actually in my enjoyment. I'm in my, you know, I'm in the MIC room helping members. I, I love that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I guess it's how you define work. But at the same time, guys, you have to relax in my opinion. Um, so I'll give you an example. It's like, if, if I trade long periods of time straight without a break, what happens is I get really bored sometimes because trading is robotic, right? I do the same shit. So sometimes I fuck up, not on purpose, but I think subconsciously, I mean, like, I don't give a fuck anymore because I get cocky. I'm doing so well. I have cushion and I start to have FOMO. I was like fucking around, you know what I'm saying? And so that shit catches up to you. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm green every day. I can be, I can be, you know, green every day. But, and then, so that's why I say, okay, what's a thousand dollar loss? Just fuck around. I'm still up, you know? But then uh, when I look back, I'm like, dude, those things add up. Just 500 bucks here, a thousand dollars there. I mean, just kind of fucking around, even though you're green for the day, you, you know, that thing adds up over time. And so that's why Alex, you know, doing so well, he just leaves. And so, you know, he doesn't get caught in this stupid boredom trades like I do, you know. You know, sometimes I make more, sometimes I lose, you know, it depends. But it's unnecessary stress for non-optimal setups. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I like to be in the action all the time, but that kind of hurts me as well. So, you know, consider that as well. You want to trade just when it's optimal. And so getting back to the breaks. So I, I took a week off. I went to New York. When I came back, it's like, dude, I'm solid. I forgot all my bad habits because it's been so long since I traded, right? I, I, I'm, I'm like hungry again. I'm hungry. I am really hungry, but at the same time, I'm like very focused on trying to make the most optimal trades because I forgot all the bad habits, you know what I'm saying? Because I got myself out of that situation. And, and so when I came back, I was refreshed. I forgot all the stupid habits I was doing and I've been very disciplined. And even include today, I mean, dude, I mean, today, everybody has, no one, I mean, everybody has a number in their head, but I don't push for it. If it comes, it comes, but I have a number that I would like to achieve every day, you know? And, and a lot of times it's like you pressure yourself for this imaginary number and it's not optimal and you end up losing. So just take what the market gives and work the process, you know, and whatever the process spits out the result that's your result don't make up an arbitrary number you know what I'm saying your profits is going to relate to your process and each day in trading is different man different setups different stocks you know that's what we always say take what the market gives that's what it means you know each day it's like fishing right guys 
Of course, you want to catch like 10 fish, but sometimes you get two. Maybe you have one big fish or 20 little fish, you know? So in my opinion, guys, take your day off a week. Give yourself one day and just relax because then you'll come back hungry. It could be Sunday. It could be Saturday, your choice. Uh, Saturday, you go out and relax. Or Sunday, your choice, man. But in my opinion, one day off, it ha- cause when you're learning, man, you need time for that to absorb in your head, okay? And it'll help you. If you're, if you are in a slump, studying more would not get you out of the slump, guys, okay? So that, that's a good, good pro tip right here. If you are in a slump, studying more <laughs> and forcing yourself is only gonna pressure you, okay? And, and you're losing already. You don't need more pressure. So I, I advise everybody, if you're in a slump, take time off. A few days, a week, whatever it is. And then get back. Because a lot of times the answers will be, aha, that aha moment might hit you while you're just eating dinner. You know, out eating dinner one day. I used to be a programmer and we have a lot of these complex uh, algorithms that we have to write. And some of these are so fucking complex. I'm like, fuck, I can't figure this shit out. And I'm fucking, I'm in it. I'm sitting there for, for hours on end, days on end, trying to figure out this problem. At the moment, I just give up and say, fuck this shit. I'm going to go take a break. And then it just comes up like out of nowhere. Like while I'm like the bar or some shit. I'm like, holy fuck, I figured it out. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of times, it's the pressure in your head that's causing the slump. So you have to remove yourself from that situation. And so in my opinion, you know, I used to be the old advocate of work your ass off. I'm Asian, right? So my parents say, fuck, there's no time off at all. Get your fucking ass to work. Go go, go to school. But, you know, you, you need that time off. I'm telling you. Otherwise, you're just going to press yourself and stress yourself. Okay? So that's my sermon for the day. And we'll start talking about what we, we came here for. So I want to talk about um, summer market trading. Uh, summer is very slow. And during the slow times... You have to be very careful because making money on slow times is very difficult, even harder than normal. Because there's not many more, there's not many situations. It, the, the action happens very quickly, and then if you miss it, you miss it. Um, but losing money is even easier. So that's the problem. If you make money, it's hard enough. Make money during the slow periods, it's even easier to lose it back. So if you make the money during the summer period, the slow periods, you need to hug it even more. Keep, keep even more disciplined during the summer, okay? Because, be, to be honest, guys, you don't need many trades to execute to make your daily nut, to make your daily quota, okay? Just to make money. <laughs> One trade is all you need. One or two good optimal setups. That's why I talk about fantasy orders a lot. Put them out there, man. Put them fucking out there. So that's the secret. Now I'm, now you guys are the, my competition because you're, you're, you're going to compete with me on the fantasy orders. But that's okay. But, you know, if, it, if one of them hits, more likely than not, you're in the money, man. Being FOMO is what kills you. And the way I've curved FOMO is to have these fantasy orders out. And to have them across a bunch of different stocks. And that way I don't, you know, get FOMO by staring at one stock and go, Oh, fuck, I didn't hit that stock. My day is over. You know, uh, in the beginning, focus on two stocks, three stocks max. Later on, you can look at more. And the secret to looking at more is using fantasy orders. I can't look at 10 stocks at once, but I do have 10 orders all over the fucking place. 10 different stocks. And you remember this. I'll give you a very simple example. 2,500 shares. If you make 10 cents, that's $250. 2,500 shares. If you make 10 cents, that's 250 bucks. 250 bucks is $50,000 a year. Okay? I mean, that's, if you can consistently do that, if you can consistently make that, make an extra 50,000, that could be life changing. Now you can go eat what you want to eat. The key is, you know, the key is just to not have these, these bullshit, furu lifestyle, uh, get rich overnight mentality. That's why people lose. They, they think, fuck, $250. Why? When I can make $2,000, I fucking hold. Why I go all fucking in, I can make $3,000. And then they lose. Consistently make your money the easiest way possible with the least amount of stress. That is the goal of a day trader. The goal of a day trader is not, is not to fucking come in, try to slay the dragon, attack the hottest plays of the day, 
and then brag about it. You know, be quiet, be humble, make your fucking money, and get the fuck out. One hour, the first hour, in my opinion, is the easiest hour to trade. You know, Alex already proved that he can make a lot of money just trading those first first hour. But trading the first hour doesn't mean you waking up when the market opens. Okay, trading the first hour means I've been up two hours prior to that, preparing for the first hour. It's just like an NBA game, a football game. They don't just come onto the field and play. They spent the entire week practicing for that one, two hour game. Okay? Think about that. Okay? When people do these math, oh, those NBA guys are making 40 mil a year, 30 mil a year, playing just two hours of game time. They don't understand that it's a 24 seven commitment to a lifestyle. Working their ass off, just like trading, guys. And so when we say trade the first hour, it doesn't mean wake up the first hour. It means preparing for the first hour. Okay? That preparation is key, guys. Okay? That's what's going to keep you consistent. Sure, you can wake up and make money. I can wake up every day and make money. But can I consistently do it unless I prepare? Because what's going to happen is this. Luck is going to run out. Okay? The only thing that will beat that luck is if you prepare. And over time, you make your own luck out of preparation. There's a quote that says, you know, luck is when opportunity, wait, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Okay? Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So you prepare for the opportunity to come. So I prepared all these stocks. So take a look at my Twitter. I pretty much top tick everything. Uh, not because I'm a genius, because I prepare. I stuck to my process, and I do the same repetitive stuff every day. And each day I refine my system to try to make it better. And that's what it is. And you have to be okay with missing the stock. So summer training, summer training, don't expect, don't expect it to be easy because lack of volume means more manipulation. It means wider range. So during the summer, or any periods where you think, where you see slow volume, low liquidity, size down. Size down and wider stops. If you are having problems trading and you are all, if, guys, if you are always stopping out at the top or the bottom and you're like, fuck, the market maker games, market maker games. No, that just means that your sizing is wrong. Your stops are wrong. And you are just part of the herd. Do not be part of the herd. My advice is to size down, give yourself a wider range. So what I do is this. Let's pretend I want to, I want to short 2,500 shares. Instead of doing 2,500 shares at one spot and then stopping out for 10 cents, do this. I split it in half, 1,200 shares, 1,200 shares. Now you have two levels to add. Wider range, smaller size. And out of those two, the average will come out. And then, you know, you, you give the time for the stock to work, for your plan to work, and you won't stop out where the sheep stops out. Okay, guys? So that's, that's a great way to do it. And, and it works across anything, in my opinion. If you, if you always stop me out, if you always stop me out, guys, even if it's 10 cents, that means you size too much. And you're too scared. My stops are not 10 cents. Because I, I divide it out by two actually. And my stops would be like 20 cents. Uh, or two lines. I, I use the line method. So it's not an arbitrary number. But I was like once it breaks a, a resistance. And it holds that resistance. I'll stop out. Not an arbitrary 10 cents. If you're arbitrary and stopping out. And it's like why? You see what I'm saying? So you have to have a reason. And um the way I do it, I'm not saying my way is the best. This is the way I do it. It's, it's always at the line. If it breaks a certain level and it holds that level, I don't just arbitrarily stop out. I wait to see that level is supported or is faked out. But the fact that I am giving it a wider range, wider range, smaller size, gives me time to evaluate. Because when I'm right, I can always add more. And that's called adding to a winner. Okay. As a newbie, people love to add to a loser. You know, that's, that's something that's going to make you blow up. 
Adding to a loser means means you deviated from your plan. So let's say your plan was to short 2,000 shares, and you're like, fuck, now it went up. You know, instead of stopping out, you're adding. That's adding to a loser. But if your plan is to divide out your position, 2,000 shares into 1,000 and 1,000, and then it goes up 10 more cents, and you're adding that extra 1,000, that is not adding to a loser, because that's part of your plan. Your plan was to divide out your position by two or three, and scale it. And that's what we call scaling. And when you scale, your average is gonna come out to wherever your average it is. So this is where you use mathematics, right? Finally in school, something comes in handy, right? So you know your, so that's another thing too. A lot of people are fearful. Why are you fearful? If you did proper planning, you should not be fear. You know your max risk. You know how much you wanna lose, do the math to figure out your stop. If I know ahead of time where I'm going to stop out and I know my risk is contained, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. That's why I have balls to put up, let's take a look at my charts, <laughs> like top ticking shorts, right? And be like, damn, how did you know? I don't fucking know. To be honest, I don't fucking know. But, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know, but I know where my risk is. And I'm, I'm playing by the odds, probability. Probability is all based around technical analysis. TA, technical analysis, all built around probability. It's like all the data from the past to, to try to help you predict the future. It's not 100%, but that's what, that's what technical analysis is. Statistics. Okay, so when people talk about data on that stuff, man, I really don't need fucking data when I have the technical analysis charts, the lines, because I can look back at a year chart and come up with it. All the information is already there on the year chart. You see what I'm saying? So basically, I'm playing by the odds. And I'm not fearful because I've done my homework ahead of time before I place the trades where I'm going to add, where I'm going to stop out, where, I'm gonna take, where I am going to take gains. So you need every plan. You need to know it, all this. So when it happens, guys, when it happens, I already know what I'm going to do. I don't have to sit there and think what I'm going to do. I play out all the scenarios in my head. So as a new trader, this is what you can do. Get a spreadsheet, get a notepad, whatever, write it down. Write down your trade plan before you enter. Make that, maybe make that as a habit so you can go back and review. So, I want to go long here. Where am I gonna stop out? Where am I gonna take gains? What if it goes up? Should I add more? So you write out your plan, guys. You write out your plan so that when it comes, you're not afraid. And with uh, OCO orders, it's called one cancels the other or a trigger order. You can program all this thing in and it will handle all that for you. And then you can go to work. So we, we have those videos in the, uh, the club. So there are trigger orders, conditional orders, OCO orders, whatever you want to call it. And these you can place where you're going to enter, where you stop, and where you take gains. So it makes it robotic trading, systematic trading. And that's, you know, and that takes away the FOMO. And that's what you do. So this works across any market condition, actually. Um, but summer, especially summer, man, you have, you have to be even more disciplined, guys. Uh, Barbie person asks, look at the... Yeah, yeah, well, take a look at... Dude, we have free videos on YouTube. Take a look at the... Look, take a look at my... Trading fish videos, daily recap. We, I talk about the whole process there. There's full blown videos there that I used to do for you guys. Uh, it's on there, so take a look at the process. I, my process is the same, guys. I look at the charts. I see where the charts are. I look at the news, try to paint the picture. I look at the filings, and then I come up with a trading plan. If I do not understand the news, guys, I'm not gonna touch the stock. You have to understand the news. Okay, you don't need to understand everything. I don't need to read everything. I just need to read the headline, like FDA approval, pan. You know, so I'm gonna take a look at what's going on, and I try to pick the picture. If I see news like this, uh, so and so stock had a pen, and then boom, the stock shoots up 100. percent Then I look into the filings, like, oh shit, they just, they just fucking like filed for a shelf or some sort of dilution, or they need money. Huh, that's a pump and dump. So then I look at the chart to see out where the resistance is, and I'm waiting for them at that line. I'm shorting at that line. 
because I already painted the picture. I'm looking at the float. I understand that they won't run me over. If it's a float like two million, three million, I'm like, oh, wait, wait a minute. I'm going to step back and wait for the early shorts to kill themselves. But I'm also not fearful. People go, oh, why are you shorting these things? I'm shorting these things because I have a proper risk management in place. So I'm not fearful. I already know if it hits my line and I short, where it's going to go next. Okay? And where am I going to stop out? So I already have a risk in my mind how much I could possibly lose on the trade. And I'm okay with it. Trading, you, you cannot be fear, fearful. You have to have confidence and trust in your system. Okay? Fear is what's going to kill you. And I'm telling you, the way to alleviate the fear is to make the plan and put in your order before it even gets there. Because before you place the order is when you are least emotional. When you're in the trade, you're so emotional. You're either fearful of making the trade or you're greedy. You're up. You're up. This is even worse than being fearful. At least with fearful, you don't place a trade and you won't lose money. Being greedy, being greedy is what kills you. Okay? Both will kill you, but one will kill you quicker. Greed. And I'll give you an example. If you're up on the stock and your plan was to sell at a certain price and now the stock is at that price, you're greedy if you don't fucking sell it. What's going to happen is most of the time, your first instinct before you got into the stock is correct because you were not emotionally invested. Now you're fucking greedy. You're like, fuck, I don't want to miss out on future gains. So I'm going to keep it. And what's going to happen is it's going to go up to that fucking price that you thought you were going to sell. It's going to dump. Okay? And then what's going to happen is now if you're even more greedy, you're like, oh, yes, now I can load up more. So you're buying it on the way down. Now you just turn a winner into a bunch of losers. So the way to the way to hold on to a, a winner longer is to have an exit strategy. Okay, and I'll give you an example. Just like scaling into the stock, you can scale out of the stock if you are above pet day trader, of course. Um, so hold, uh, get rid of half maybe to lock in some cushion, and hold the other half, and use a trailing stop. Okay, and the trailing stop will move along so that you can you can take advantage of the gain if it keeps going. I do what's called recycling shares, which we taught, we teach. It's a little more, it's a little more advanced method, which, uh, but it's the same concept. It's a trailing stop. Recycling shares is like a trailing stop. I take half and I scalp it and half, I hold it and I ride along with it. And then when it breaks back up, I'm, I'm all out the position and I'm still green on the stock because I've already taken cushion. So I keep recycling it. That's why I call it recycling shares. Okay, so, but the key is this. The key is always to plan your trade and trade your plan. I hate that line, but that's a good line. Um, it, the moment I lose, guys, is when I make shit up on the fly. Like, I'm winging it. I'm like, oh, fuck, this stock is running. Boom, I start hitting it. And I'm like, okay. And then what happens is this. Uh, most of the time, it works out. But that walking one time, that doesn't work out. I'm stuck. And I'm, now I'm finally doing my research. <laughs> How often does this happen to you guys? Okay. How often does this happen to you guys? You guys are in a stock and it goes against you. You're down, right? And now all of a sudden you're looking up filings. You're looking up reasons to keep holding on to that fucking loser. Cause you're like, what the fuck? That's the thing. If you're, if you're now looking at reasons to hold, you're fucked up. You should have looked for the reasons to get in on the first place. So that's why I talk about planning, man. A lot of people plan after they get in. You need to plan before you get in. Okay? Whenever this is this is a this is a trigger I see myself as well. I, I, I get cute for a scalp, I get lazy, I don't do the research before I get in, and then now I'm down. Now I'm looking up filings, now I'm looking up um, charts, I'm looking up Twitter, I'm looking up every reason that can convince me that I was not stupid to still be in the trade when I know I already fucked up. So do your planning before you get in the trade. So I've been much better and more disciplined at that. If you miss, you miss. I missed a bunch today because I was doing uh, research. You know what I'm saying? I'm re researching this to make sure that I'm not stepping into something I do not understand. So take the time, man. You, you know, it's better to miss than to get into a situation you did not anticipate. A any questions, guys? Hey, James. Any questions? Let's take a look at these comments. Who wants to get on here, guys? MIC is for beginners, advanced, intermediate, everything. 
We have all sorts of people in the room. We teach you how to get started trading the proper way. So if you're new, man, you need to start doing it properly. Otherwise, you can get bad habits, man. And unlearning a bad habit is pretty hard. Who's this David guy? <laughs> uh, I'm just skeptical. You're skeptical. You don't have to get in, dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm here to help people, man. I mean, you should be skeptical. <laughs> but you know, there's a reason. There's, there's a difference in being, being skeptical and being a fucking troll and hater. <laughs> Big difference, guys. It's like... Um, okay, who wants to get on, guys? Let me bring that guy on. The guy that's skeptical. Let's, let's do it. Let's bring on this guy. Go live with David. Nope. Can you hear me now? 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 Okay, cool. That's weird. That skeptical guy, try to bring him on. If you're such a skeptic, why don't you get on and communicate? I mean, that's the thing. This is your opportunity, guys. Opportunity to learn. Opportunity to get your questions asked. I just don't understand. It's like, it's like oh, you're a scammer. I'm skeptical. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And then the opportunity for you to come and ask a question, you shy away from it. It, it, it just makes absolutely no sense to me, man, guys. And you know what? That, that's the difference between I don't want to be a fucking asshole, but this is tough love, man. If you want to succeed in life, it's like, you, you, fuck, dude, you have to take it into your own hands. If, you, if, you, if you're saying something is a scam and, and the guy is like offering you to come in and discuss it and you don't want to discuss it, I mean, dude, that's, that's all on you, man. That's all on you. Okay, let me bring on uh, Barbie. That uh, he sh where where you at, man? Wave wave your hand up, Barbie. You, you joined a month ago. So let's see. I'm trying to find the. Uh, uh, raise your hand. Who wants to get on? Uh, I think Barbie said he wanted to get on. I'm trying to find his account. There you go. Go live with Barbie. I thought it was a girl, but I think it's a guy. Hey, bro, what's up? Hey, you're you you How are you? ten? No, Barbie. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, Giacomo is my name. Barbier is my last name, Italian name. Oh, you in Italy? No, I'm in, I'm in New York. But uh, okay. after I'm gonna be good uh, good on this, I'm gonna move back. This is my station here at work. Ah, uh, sweet. Is this home office? I'm huh? a, I, yeah, I'm a personal trainer, so I'm in my gym now, and I am oh, in a break. Dude. So I try to keep, uh, I keep open at the, you know, 8.30 a.m. possibly, or 9, until 11 or 12. To try Sweet. to get some trade and to learn. Yeah. So introduce yourself, tell the yes, whole yes, world yes. who you are and what's going on. I was looking for extra source of income because we have a kid and we plan a new kid, another kid uh, next summer. And then uh, I saw these oh, crazy congrats, guys congrats. that live uh, in... <laughs> thank you, thank you. So I saw these crazy guys that live in a shade and basically they spend uh, $300 a month and they survive like that. So they don't have to work and they're very proud of that. I said, this is not living. Like you said about drinking before, right? You have to live. You have to enjoy it. So there was, an, was not an option. And then I saw uh, trading and I said, oh, what's, what's this stuff? You know, 
what these guys do. And I started looking online and I found uh, a couple of people, you know, the classic guys that they spend a lot of money on advertising. So I saw Sykes and, uh, and Ross Cameron. And I started <laughs> learning stuff online from videos. And I started listening to podcasts, the Steady Trade uh, podcast of Bowen and uh, the Beyond the PDT. And then Harry was there and Agent 47 was there. Have you listened to their uh, interviews? Yeah, he's up. Yeah, he did a great interview with them. Yeah, so I said, look, these guys, are, they're speaking so well about the group. And there was another guy or two, I think. So I said, let Harry, me just... Harry uh, Haas, yeah. Harry? Harry, yeah, Harry, yeah. And so I said, uh, uh, I think I can do it on my own. Let me try. So I opened my account with 26K on Tinkerswing just to be over PDT. And uh, the first day I made uh, one trade, $1,000. I said, oh, this is easy money. <laughs> the next morning uh, I woke up. <laughs> the next morning I woke up and I, 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 I opened a trade uh, in the pre-market and I made $3,000. So Too I, easy. Said, I said, oh my Too God, let me, close, let me close my gym business and let's move to Italy tomorrow. <laughs> but then in the afternoon, <laughs> and then I did another two little trade in the morning, like just a borrow on trade, $280, 360 I said, oh my God, I'm making so much money. And then in the afternoon, a client came early. I was supposed not to trade anymore. I made 45 for the day, I think, or 4,000. 4, I said, oh my God. And so I said, that's it. I trade my client and then I, I, fin I work out, I finish my stuff. But he came early. So I had half an hour before the market end. And I got into a stock. And I was up like three, 400 bucks. I said, I don't take it. It's just, you know, little money. And then he was lost at $500. Let's wait. <laughs> When it goes back to zero and I sell it, and it went to 1,000. And then you close it to 1,000, let me close it to 500. And then it went to 3,000. And I said, okay, fuck, let me close it out. <laughs> so I lost all the, all the gain. And then, oh, and then same on Monday, and then same on Monday was my third day. Monday was my bird, my son's birthday, so we had a big party on Sunday. I was tired. I got in and in three trades I lost like 6K. I say, okay, let oh, me step shoot. back. Yeah, <laughs> yep. I said, let me stick back because now I am under PDT and, uh, you know, I, I, I understand that my, 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 my um, trading doesn't work so well, so let me join. So I joined, I spoke, wait, I spoke that was with just Austin in, right away. That's just the third day. Third day, so, I made, uh, so I made 5,000 so and I lost 6, 7,000. In all the three days, that's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, right, it's so crazy. And I realized that I need more discipline. So I said, let me step back, let me learn more. And so I joined, and basically I made uh, four trades in, uh, in a month now, four or five trades. And every trade I make, uh, I make it based on a plan. And I keep, you know, my stop, uh, you know, lose enough to get it some wiggle, but I'm doing okay, you know. I'm still working but on my long side, so I don't short. Correct, correct. But you're learning, you're yeah. learning how to keep your gains. You know how to do risk management. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, that, I'm that, trying. That's, Even... the, that's the key. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. I tell you, man, it's funny. You, your story is actually the same story as most people, except you're very fortunate because you experienced it in three days. Other people experienced it in three years. They're up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it takes them three years of doing that, right? So yeah, at least yeah. they, you, you figure it out right away. So it's funny because that's, that's what happened to me too in the beginning. Oh, I made money. It's so easy. I'm going to quit my job and yeah. become a millionaire. <laughs> yeah. I told my wife, I told my wife the story and I said, listen, when are I going to make scam trading in trade? I think we retire and we we'll make Twitter and I just trade only. <laughs> yeah, it could be, so, but it's not overnight. That's the difference. It's not overnight. No, yeah. No, it takes time. Because and I always say is this. even harder. I, I tell people this. Making money is hard enough, right? Losing money is yeah. even easier. So it's, it's very hard to keep your money. You got to keep the money. It's That's true. the hardest part about trading. It's true. And it's going long is harder. It. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's all different, but uh, you know what? In order to be a good short seller, you have to understand the long game. So the process you're doing is correct. Because then later on, once you get comfortable with the mechanics of trading, go, go short side too because – Shorting is not yeah. as easy as people think because with shorting, you can get blown out very fast. If you're not careful, I mean, a stock wouldn't dump 80% on you, but a stock will go up 80% like that. Yeah. So 
that's why I started to use the the bracket with the stop loss. I put a stop loss yes. around three uh, percent or whatever the the range, uh, you know, recommend the stop three, four, five, sometimes just two. And when I start yep. the order, I already have the stop there, just in case I get a dead candle. You know, I go out. Yep. It's fine. I, I stick to my plan. Because if I yep, have to do yep. myself, then I can just say, oh, let me wait a little longer. Maybe it's coming back. Now, TRNX is going up again, and I didn't trigger before, and now I'm just looking. But, so, yeah, you know. It's, so, you, yeah. you only joined a month ago. Yeah, yeah. And you learned all that in a month? <laughs> That's pretty Yeah, I, I, I studied three months on my own, YouTube uh, okay. stuff from February. From yes. February, when I found out about trading, I studied uh, that stuff, and then I thought, oh, I got it. Let me try. You know, it's not easy to stay there and study only without triggering. So I had my account <laughs> open, yeah. but they never touch it, not even for, a, for a, uh, paper trading. Yep, yep. So that's good, man. Yeah. I'm glad things are going yeah. well. It's only your first month. And, and, and I, by the sound of it, you already got it because I'm telling you now, risk management is the hardest thing to, to figure out when you just start. Most people will go broke because of risk management. Uh, yeah, keep definitely. your small, losses small in the beginning. <laughs> and then you know you learn. That's it. Um, let me ask you this though. You also you need. I, I like to do a max daily loss on this on the broker side. Because yeah, know. I heard about that. Yeah, yeah I yeah. should do it. I should do it. I should call Tinker and let him uh, block me if I get uh, maximum loss. Yes. Yeah. Now I, I am. Tell a... you, man, that saved me many times too. Because all t in yeah. trading is like this. All all it takes is one mistake. One mistake. To blow, blow up everything. You saw that, right? You lost six thousand dollars in one day. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was in a trance. Yeah. You know, I was getting there and say, oh, I sh this this one should go up because they're the great news. But you know, the market doesn't listen to you. you right? uh, this is what I realized. This is what I know is when when you swing that much on that, you're trading too big. You you're yeah, trading I way know. too big for your account size. Um, and yeah, you make the monster, but I guarantee you, you will lose more than you make. You saying so? Uh, Losing 25% of your account value is, uh, you know, that's, that's hurts, man. So place your maybe a 2,000 stop loss max a day, whatever it may be, right? Mm -hmm. The thing is yeah. you don't, don't want to – there's a certain point where you lose that it's not coming back. The stock's not coming back to you, right? So – Yeah, definitely. But, but, but I'm glad that you're learning, brother. I appreciate you coming yeah, on, Yeah, man. you know, no, it takes time, you know. What would be your advice? Give give one quick advice to the beginning trader that's starting out. So before you even start, you know, triggering in uh, your sell and your buy and start getting excited, just learn. You know, now I downloaded all the PDF of the weekly week, weekend uh, uh, chat when they gave you advice. I downloaded all of them and I'm reading them all, oh, and then awesome. I'm watching all the videos. Yeah, I have that's some awesome. downloaded in my computer, some online. So more you learn at the beginning, and it easier it gets when you get started. Yep, uh, study, right? That's yeah, let me, yeah, study. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me ask you a last question about yes. about having an age. Because you, I texted you before and you answered that, but I didn't, maybe you didn't understand my question. My question was that you get a ticker coming out on your screen, right? Or, yeah. or is a low hanging fruit from the previous day? So what you do is you look back in history, you check if it spiked, if you hold these spikes, or uh, what was the resistance, what was the, you draw all your lines. You yes. don't go. You don't you don't track numbers on a spreadsheet because that would that 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 process kills me. Like tracking, uh, putting down a ticker with high and lows and all this stuff that uh, I saw in the in the other, in Joe Kelly's other, videos. Other other people do it. You can't do it. I mean, the more the more you do it, I guess, the more information for yourself. But I mean, I have bad habits. I've been doing this too long. I don't track that because all that data is already on the chart. You yeah, saying? exactly. It's what I think. Uh, usually, my pivot lines are pretty good, like the lines they put in. Yeah, they're pretty so that's good how on their own. So, it, so that's how you practice as well. You don't have to trade these stocks, but try practicing drawing the lines, just just so that you get comfortable when you pull up a chart. You can see the lines right away. Like when I pull up the chart, I can see right away within like five seconds. See? Yeah. So keep practicing. And uh, look at look at all the plays that run. So this is what you do. This is how you track it. Okay, you look at every single play that runs. You don't have to trade it, but look at where it spikes to and where it supports. And then look at the float and look at the news and then look at the filing. Then you, then you have a piece of information for the next time. You see what I'm saying? So keep doing that because the more repetition that you see over and over, the better it is. 
So, so I guess for tracking, it, you can track it with a spreadsheet, you know, in the beginning, or you can take a look. It's however it works for you, man. For, for me, yeah, I don't I, do it. But uh, yeah, I screenshot that. I screenshot all the plays of the day. They wanted you guys trade on the chat room. I screenshot yeah. it on Tinkerswim, and I screenshot the one they wanted to trade and see how much they went up and uh, what was the news. Yep. And, and look at yeah. the lines, I'm telling you, because yeah. the, the, I, I learned by just looking at these plays and saying, oh, dang, I was right or what's wrong? Because even I paper trade in my head so that I know next time, you know, when I see a situation and a setup like that, I can react. So I know, like, oh, I'm in too early or I'm too far out. You see know what I'm saying? And so yeah. I usually go smaller size to start and then scale out. But if you take a notice, I, it's the same process. I look at the year chart, and then I zoom in and I zoom in. Just like the training videos that you see. Yeah, yeah. I noticed it. But it's great, man. What's your okay, name in the so chat room I, again? What's your name in the chat room? Uh, Gia uh, Giacomo is my, la is my first Giacomo. name, Giacomo. Yeah. Giacomo. <laughs> Great, okay, my friend. So thank you for your time, and uh, I'll see you in Philly then. Yes, Philadelphia. I already right, booked bro. my trip, everything, so I'll meet awesome. you there. Awesome, my friend. See you soon. Perfect. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. Bye. Take, Take care. Well, that was, kind of, that was kind of cool. Man, he learned a lot in the month process. You see what happened? He was very fortunate. He's very fortunate to have, have, have experienced that to make money very quickly. Going from trading is very simple. I'm gonna quit my job and become a full-time trader off of, off of three trades. And he was up like fucking a shitload of money, man. Uh, the first day, second day, so, so then he got arrogant, which is everybody, okay? And he lost it, but thankfully, thankfully he didn't lose it all. And it was a, an expensive learning experience, but at least he only lost his gains back and a little bit of money. So I'm very happy that it happened in the sense of he's learning from it. And that, that's, that's what most traders don't realize until years later and they go broke. So he is way advanced. He knows putting stops in. He knows risk management. That is what every new trader lacked. That's what I lacked back then. I lacked discipline. I lacked risk management. And I was always having FOMO. And it's like, I, I knew I was a good trader, but fuck, why would I always got, be entering early and then fighting to get out of that hole? And so I, now I ha you have to have the patience and the discipline to miss the trade. The moment that got into my head, I became much better trader. Being able to miss the trade and just fucking say, forget it. I don't need to trade this. There's another set of 10 stocks I could trade. So being able to control yourself, have no FOMO. Everybody's going to have FOMO, but that's where you have layers. I call it layers of protection, okay? Risk management, man. There's many different layers. First layer is the stop loss. Second layer is you can do max size. I do a max size. Uh, another one is broker side, max daily loss, so you don't get ran over. Many different layers, and then you get a tab, trading accountability, buddy. All these layers are layers of security protection. So if one layer fails, at least there's another layer to protect you. Because we are human beings, man. Trust me. You will fuck up. You will have one bad day. You will fight with someone and then come to work angry. And that anger is going to translate into fucked up traits. So you have to have many layers of security around you. You know, We have insurance for our car. We have insurance for our house, insurance for our health. Why not have insurance for your stocks? And that's what the stop losses are. Stop losses are your insurance policy, man. No one likes being triggered a stop loss, but that will save you. It's better to take a small manageable loss than it is to take the mother of all losses. Okay, we have time for one quick person to get in. Anybody else want to talk? Thanks, Dr. Mo. That was awesome, man. That was an awesome. Um, thanks for sharing your experience. We have one quick person who want to get in. Raise your hand. Don't be shy. <laughs> All right, Danny, you want to come back? <clears throat> hey, buddy. What's up, Bo? This is a, you're a trainer, too. We have two trainers today. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not a, a, a 
trainer, I just compete. Like, oh, even better. <laughs> so, okay, so this is your second week of MIC. How how is it going so far? Going well, man. Um, well, uh, we spoke before, but we just text before, and you know, I I was uh, I stopped uh, trading about five months ago, and I I stopped for about five six months. And we spoke about the reason why, and also because um, I lost my son. My uh, my son passed away. So oh man, really bad. I'm for, sorry, man. For a few months, uh, it took about eight months to get back into um, into my you know my own self. But um, back to your question, I, I like it, man. Um, I haven't tra I haven't trade. Uh, I haven't been in the chat room for for a long time, and uh, I see that. Um, you know the, the improvements that I made and the mistakes that I'm that I'm making just by watching other people's uh, uh, trades and what they write, um, and um, yeah, it's, it's cool. Right now, the yeah. Problem, right now, the problem, getting a, a tab. Um, I spoke to a few people, but um, my main thing, I, I really don't care how they um, how they trade. It's it's uh, the first question that I ask is uh, money management, and yeah. that's that's all I care. Um, when they when they uh, tell me that uh, basically they don't really care about the uh, money management. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> I, I kind of like, you know, I, I just don't want to do it because I just want to, I don't want to hang out with someone who's, who's, uh, well, you know what I call those people? Gamblers. You yeah. want to avoid the gamblers. And you know, when you're a beginning Thanks. trader, that's, a, that's how you can tell a beginning trader. They're in it for the quick bucks. They are thinking they're going to get rich overnight, like a lottery system. And yeah. that's, you know, and like Giacomo just said, I mean, when he started, he made 4,000 bucks, 5,000 bucks the first day or two. So it's like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And so that's the gambling mentality. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate that he's able to, to understand that so quickly. But, um, you, you, I mean, I, there's nothing to help these people. That's why uh, I'm sorry, sorry uh, about, oh. I just want to um, share with you guys, uh, this is my son right here. I have, oh, man. How, how old is he, man? Um, he was, uh, it was a, a stillborn. Oh man. Yeah. Right. Uh, he passed right at the, um, the, uh, deliver room. But, um, yeah, we have him here with us. Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to. No problem, man. Uh, you know what, man? Uh, I remember talking to you back then you were down and you seem much happier now, man. So I'm yes. glad, you know? Yes. And, and yeah, and to be honest, I, I used to, I was blaming everyone, um, uh, everyone else for, for everything that was going on uh, in my life. But uh, in reality, it, it's you know, it's just life. It's me, and I got my shit together, and uh, we're here now. And uh, you know what, man? That's why. That's why I tell people, man. If your personal life is in is is in chaos, so will your trading. You yes. have to fix the personal life, right, my friend? Yes. And so, yes. it's uh, trading is not the solution. Mm -hmm. If you if you have money problems, trading is not the solution. But it will help you if you have the right mentality. Like, I'm not going to get rich overnight. I'm going to study this. And, and learn it the right way, slow yeah. and steady. You know, yeah. but if, if anybody thinks like they're going to come in and make millions of dollars, you know, that, that's the hard reality, man. And I'm glad that you got your personal life. You know, that's the thing, man. You've, I, I, I've gone through this many times. I have a lot of hardships, a lot of personal problems. And if I have fights with my significant other or whatever, right, man, I come in the market pissed off and then I start losing money. Or when I'm fighting or just, you know, so getting your personal affairs in order is very important because trading is stressful, man. But having personal problems and, and then trading is just, is suicide in my opinion, bro. So I'm glad that things are working out for you, man. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I, like I said, I really appreciate that um, uh, I'm able to just share with others my, my ideas. Um, I, you know, it's, it's I know um, – um, the majority of the traders, they, you know, you guys trade uh, uh, small caps, but in reality, the mentality is the same thing. The the, the game is the same, you know. Correct. Uh, the process. The process. The process yep. Same. The same thing. So, um, just by by uh, just um, reading what other people are writing and their their thought process and and their mistakes, you know. Um, and you know what? Remember when we talked about trading is very lonely, man. Yeah. So you know, having someone to talk to and understand is important, man. Just like talk, like don't you feel better just talking? I feel better just talking about it, right? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. And the thing is, it's very hard unless you're a trader to to understand what another trader is feeling. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, and everyone calls us a gambler. And so whenever we say we lose money, they're like, because you're gambling. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so um, just have, go ahead. I just, I just want to say, um, cause I know a few people were, you know, maybe I'm the new guy and a few people are not uh, posting my, my, uh, my cards, my trades and all. <laughs> I, 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 I mentioned that I improved my, uh, my uh, risk to reward, my, my, uh, my trading just by changing a few things. And the reason why uh, this came to, to mind is because I was looking at uh, other people's trades uh, in, in chat and uh, I'm able, I was able to see that uh, they, were, they were making their, their uh, reward was bigger than the risk. So I'm like, what can I do to do that, uh, to improve mine? So I went back and I, tr I tracked everything that I do. And just by making a few changes, I was able to uh, my, my reward and um, I fell in and out. I, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm really good at uh, hitting the top or the bottom, but my mistake was that I wasn't holding. So um, what I did was I went back, uh, back to all, all, all my trades that I've already uh, uh, took and I, I just let my uh, runners my one more and uh, now I'm able to take trades one. So before I would just go one in and then a bunch of out. But based on my strategy, now I'm able to do like a two to one. one where before I would just go like a one to one. That's great, dude. So now, you are you you're scaling out now, right? That's what you're doing. I'm scaling now, but I'm taking a little longer because um uh to to take my my profits because uh based on my trading uh. I'm able to just, uh, you know, hit, like I said, hit the top, the, the top or the bottom. So it gets, yep. Yeah, make a little more. So that's, that's awesome, man. That, that's the problem I have too. I I take profits way too early, and so the mm -hmm. chat room has actually helped me because I'm I'm watching people like they're holding it longer, and I'm like, dude, if I just held it a little bit longer, so everybody has their, you know, no one's a perfect trader. I'm not a perfect trader. And so having this environment to learn from each other and for support is great, man. I'm learning every day, and I've been doing this for a long time. Yes. Even, you, what, you, even what you're saying, Danny, is like resonating to me because I'm starting to do that a lot more now too. Mm. Awesome, man. Thanks for sharing. All right, I'm going yeah, to leave sure, you man. now. Thank you. Hey, thanks for sharing your story, brother. All right. Appreciate Thank it, man. Come man. All right, no problem. Whew. Well, that, that was very unexpected. I'm very happy, very happy for Danny. You know, it leads us to conclude. Trading is very difficult, but it's not impossible. So you want to position yourself the best possible chance you can get. If your life is in chaos, spend that money, spend that time to fix it first before you look into trading. But remember, you don't have to use money to trade. Trading is going to take you many months to learn. You can have free resources, YouTube. My Investing Club has a free YouTube channel you can go into. So study. Don't have to use real money. Paper trade during that time. And if you paper trade and learn, maybe it'll help you out of your, your personal situation. Because... Man, if your mind is too focused on being stressful, it's going to wreck it. And so sometimes you have to have some positive thing to look forward to. I'm not asking you to pay for MIC. I'm saying start learning for free on your own. There's free YouTube resources that you can take. Okay? Thanks, guys. I'm about to die here. <laughs> I'll see you guys back in the room. Have a good Monday, guys.